We're gonna be finishing up on clearancing for the new wheels and tires and uh, hopefully this thing will be sitting on all four of them by the end of today and with enough clearance to be able to actually drive it or at least uh, you know be able to move it a little bit. Uh, hopefully we'll get some clearance for being able to turn as well. Um, but then also before we get started on that, I wanna show you around. Uh, in the previous video, you saw that we moved everything around. Chris's car is outside right now. I want to try and bring it back in here for when we work on it, but he only has weekends to come here, so that's why it's outside for now. Uh, the Vic is in here. I don't really know why. I kind of just want to put it outside and put a tarp over it for now. There's really no reason for that thing to be in here. Uh, but anyways, uh, as you can see, my dad got one more car. We were planning on getting two more, but this is a real MGTD unlike the other one, which I don't think you guys have seen yet. There's uh, another location where he has another two cars and he has uh, a replica MGTD and then a replica 1929 Mercedes Gazelle. Uh, but this is a real 1950 MGTD and this thing, it, it, without talking about it too much, it is so incredibly clean. Uh, the color isn't the best, but I think with the kind of like more olive interior, I think it kind of brings it together. And it's also from the 50s, so it's like, you know, if you look at all the color cars from there, and most of them weren't very uh, tasteful nowadays. Anyways, uh, you can see we kind of moved everything around. We got the Mark 1 SSRs from 3-piece out here and uh, we're just going to start fitting everything up and um, start cutting away more. We're going to have to cut more in the rear just to be able to fit it in there and then we're going to move on to the other side, basically duplicate it and then from there we'll make sure it's all sitting the way we want it to and then from there uh, what we'll do is we'll make sure that I can turn 100% with the wheels the way they are now and then we're going to test with the flares and we're going to be able to see how thick a spacer we're going to want. Fits. That's probably still not enough clearance to be able to drive, but it's not it's sitting on anything, so that's good.
while the camera was off, we put some plastic around the wheels and we put some tape around here, just as basically a little bit of a precaution because they are gonna be staying on the car for now. Um, and they're pretty much gonna stay on until we get the flares mounted and where we want them. So I'm gonna order those Clico clips, that way we can mount everything. Uh, but we also did a super quick test fit with the front and the rear, and I'll do it again for you guys so you can kind of see. Um, we're not entirely sure if we're gonna need spacers at all because we're gonna zero out this camber in the rear and then the front I think has probably zero camber. We're, we're gonna wanna get it at like maybe like negative one or negative two. I don't know, I just wanna match them but just have like very, very slight camber. Um, but after both get set, we'll see how much of a spacer we want. Um, so I think we're not gonna order spacers until basically the flares are where we want them. Um, Again, these flares are going to have to be modified and changed up a little bit. Um, you can see when it's up against here, and this will be brought out a little bit, somewhere around here. That'll be brought out a little bit, so that'll be good for making our side skirt really wide and how I want it. And then you can see that I have enough clearance here, because I'm not trying to be super stance boy and have crazy fitment. And then over here, we are going to cut out a little bit for the door handle. Um, but I think overall, I think it's a pretty good fitment. I think we can maybe, you know, bring it together a little bit and modify it a little bit so that it does have a little bit more space in there. Um, I'm probably going to wait until George comes here and we really start kind of going at these flares and starting to modify them and everything and, and uh, you know, basically just kind of get them to fit correctly and we're gonna see how much space we really have to work with and then from there make them pretty much as wide as possible and then from there see how much spacer we need. Uh, but I don't think we're gonna need nearly as big of a spacer as I initially thought. I thought we were gonna go for like a two inch spacer and that still wasn't gonna be enough, but it looks like maybe like a 20 millimeter if that's gonna be used. Um, I think that we're gonna be able to move on from this without getting any spaces, which is good because that's less time that has to be taken out. We're not gonna be welding it shut. I want the rear door to be able to open whenever I take the flare off. The flare is gonna be bolted around it and on top of it. So with the flare on there, it will not be able to open. I'll probably put something here, some kind of like screw or something, that way no one can accidentally try and open the door and ruin the flare. Uh, but I want it to be able to open when I take the flare off. Um, but I'm still gonna have the body line in here. It's all gonna be nice and finished off. Even inside here, it'll all be finished off and everything. But uh, it's not gonna be able to open when the flare is on there. Uh, and then moving on to the front, this one has to be modified even more than the rear. Uh, and you can tell we need a little bit of a spacer, but I think once we zero out the camber, or at least, I don't know if it has positive camber or what, but it looks like it does. But I think that'll bring the top of the wheel in and it'll show that we need a little bit of a spacer. But when we kind of put this up against here, you see, depending on how high or low we go around here, I have quite a bit of space, but that's also kind of how I want it because I want to be able to turn everything without rubbing and um, all this is going to have to be trimmed and molded and this is going to be cut out for the bumper and then the front lip is going to come down from here so that's why this doesn't continue down from there um, but anyways uh, i think we're going to just take this up to the car and kind of see how the whole thing looks you know take a couple steps back and kind of go from there and see what we're going to do
Alrighty guys, we are just about wrapping it up here today. Uh, we've got both sides all cut up. It's sitting on the ground without actually rubbing, uh, so that's good. Uh, we are gonna have to cut significantly more in the rear uh, just so that we can clearance for the uh, suspension movement. And then in the front, uh, I think I'm gonna wait until we see what we do for spacers. Realistically, I don't need to be able to turn for a while. Uh, this car isn't gonna be moving. So I'm gonna wait until we decide if we're gonna get spacers or not, and then cut so that way we're not wasting time cutting once and then cutting again. Uh, as is, we'll have plenty of movement if we do need to move it at all. But uh, anyways, uh, the other side, much cleaner than this side, but that's because I only did one cut on that side versus twice on this side. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is start working on finishing up this bottom side of the long nose. Get this thing nice and finished off. It's real ugly under there right now. Uh, I need to finish off a lot of this stuff in here. Make sure that's all nice. And then we need to finish off the fenders. And then I think from there, it's just a lot of like real small, like nitpicky stuff. Um, but I'm sure a lot of that can be done in between actually mounting up the fender flares and uh, modifying them uh, because we will need to actually be cutting away some of this stuff and uh, building out new parts to make sure that it uh, kind of molds up against the car because we are not molding the fender flares. Um, I've actually gotten that a lot as well is why don't you mold the fender flares? I understand a lot of Bozo cars do and some of you guys actually have the misconception that uh, most of them are bolted on. Uh, they are kind of half and half. A lot of them are molded but a lot of them are bolted on as well. I think for right now my preference is bolted on. That's kind of just what I want, and then that way I can actually open the rear door if I need to get in there. Um, I think that the molded ones typically don't look quite as good. I think that at least when it's just kind of like a fender flare slapped on there, it kind of just looks like it's a fender flare and it kind of just fits decent and it's okay. Whereas the ones that are molded on there, they typically kind of just don't really look all that well. And uh, I don't know, I, I would just like to be able to take the fender flares on and off. And, it's just, I think it looks better, and, but later down the line, maybe once, you know, I get tired of the initial color scheme and everything, and we paint it again, this is years down the line, uh, maybe I'll mold them, but we'll see, that's honestly far, far future. Uh, anyways, what else is there? I don't know. That's pretty much all we did today was clearance for everything, got all four wheels and tires on there for the first time. It's sitting pretty level. It's sitting right where I want it to. It's at a really good height for me. Uh, it's not too low, but it's also not too high. It's gonna be really good once we get our side skirts on there. We'll be able to do a nice angle and you know, it'll just all come together, I'm sure. They'll understand once we start building all that stuff, which that's gonna be the truly exciting stuff. It's once we get the flares on there, we start building all the arrow. But that's pretty much it for today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out.